Hello and welcome to the Estate Planning Toolbox. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to check out everything we have going on here. My name is John Connor and I am an attorney in the Trust and Estates Group of Graves Doherty here in Ann Moody, a law firm located in downtown Austin, Texas. This podcast is a client-focused podcast covering various estate planning topics, including wills and trusts, powers of attorney, corporate entities such as LLCs and limited partnerships, probate administration, and everything in between. Thanks very much for stopping by. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Estate Planning Toolbox. Today, we're going to be wrapping up our discussion of the overview of the United States transfer tax system. Last time we talked about the estate tax and the gift tax and today we're going to talk about the generation skipping transfer tax. This is a very complicated part of the U.S. transfer tax system so I'm going to keep it at a very 30,000 foot view for you today. We won't get too much into the weeds again. Really I just want to be sure that you have the tools to have an informed discussion with your estate planning attorney whenever you are considering adding new estate planning documents or updating your current estate planning documents. But before we jump into today's discussion, let's take a look at today's movie quote of the day. And today's movie quote is, you're killing me, Smalls. Pretty short quote, pretty simple, but certainly from a classic movie, especially if you grew up in the 1990s and or enjoy a good baseball movie. That was a pretty good hint there. So stick around until the end and I will tell you exactly what movie that is from. Continuing on with our discussion from last time and today discussing the generation skipping transfer tax, really the important thing to understand about the generation skipping transfer tax is that it is another layer of tax on top of the estate and gift tax. But it's only going to apply to gifts that are made to individuals or in some cases to a trust benefiting those individuals who are more than one generation below your own or to someone who is more than 37 and one half years younger than you. Typically, this would mean grandchildren or great-grandchildren, but obviously given that 37 and a half year age gap that they mention, it does not necessarily have to be a grandchild or great-grandchild or anything like that. So in today's discussion, we will talk a lot about skip persons and non-skip persons. Skip persons are obviously those individuals that are more than one generation below your own or who are more than 37 and a half years younger than you. Non-skip persons, therefore, are just simply, as their name implies, those persons that do not meet the definition of skip persons. Therefore, the generation skipping transfer tax would not apply to them. One thing to keep in mind is that even though someone might be more than one generation below your own, they could very well have a generation adjustment made to where the tax code would treat them as not more than one generation below your own. The primary example of that would be, let's say that you have children and grandchildren, and one of your children dies. That child's children, your grandchildren, would have their generation for generation skipping transfer tax purposes adjusted up so that they would be considered at the same generation as your children, meaning that any gifts made to them would no longer be subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. So there are three general types of transfers that the generation skipping transfer tax are going to apply to. The first is a direct skip. That is the most straightforward. That is simply when an individual makes a gift to someone who is a skip person, i.e. again, someone that is more than one generation below their own and or more than 37 and a half years younger than them. The other transfers that the generation skipping tax applies to are indirect skips and there's actually two of those the taxable distribution and the taxable termination the taxable distribution is any distribution of income or property from a trust to a skip person that is not otherwise subject to the estate or gift tax an example of this would be a grandparent sets up a trust for a grandchild then any payments made out of the trust to that grandchild beneficiary would be subject to the G GST tax. The other form of an indirect skip would be a taxable termination. This involves a skip person and a non-skip person and also usually is in a trust type scenario where we would have a non-skip person as that initial primary beneficiary of the trust such that the transfer to the skip person actually takes place upon the death of the non-skip person. So again an example of that would be a grandparent creating a trust for their child. Once the distributions are made to that skip person after the death of the non-skip person, that is when the GST tax would apply and it would apply to those distributions. 
much like the estate and gift tax, just because someone makes a transfer that is subject to the generation skipping transfer tax does not necessarily mean that there will actually be any tax that has to be paid, and that's for a couple different reasons. One is, much like the estate and gift tax, there is an annual exclusion that applies to generation skipping transfers. And it, just like the annual exclusion for the estate and gift tax, is $15,000 on a per beneficiary basis. And also, like the estate and gift tax annual exclusion, it is able to be split by spouses, meaning that they can make a combined $30,000 of generation skipping transfer tax gifts to skip persons, which will qualify for the annual exclusion and will not require the filing of a gift tax return. Obviously, this would apply to direct skips when you make a gift to someone that is a skip person. And it can also apply to gifts made to trust that would be subject to the generation skipping transfer tax as an indirect skip. There are some formalities that would need to be met for those trusts, so be sure that you discuss those with your estate planning attorney. Also, like the estate and gift tax, there is a lifetime exemption amount that applies to the generation skipping transfer tax, and it is also currently at $11.18 million, or in the case of married couples, $22.36 million that, that can be transferred to skip persons either directly or indirectly without being subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. The way this really works is obviously if you make a large direct skip gift to someone, you would use a GST annual exclusion and the lifetime exemption amount. If you make a gift to a trust, you would assign a corresponding amount from the GST lifetime exemption amount to that trust so that any distributions that later come out of that trust to skip persons would not be subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. If you do make a taxable generation skipping transfer tax and because you're very generous, you've used up all your lifetime time exemption amount as it applies to the GST tax. The tax rate for generation skipping transfers is 40% and it's a flat 40% unlike the estate and gift tax which is a marginal 40% tax rate. So if you do end up making a generation skipping transfer over and above the lifetime exemption amount for generation skipping transfers it will be taxed at a flat 40% rate. So here let's go through a couple of quick examples for the GST tax. One we have here where a grandparent makes a one million dollar gift to a grandchild. This is a taxable gift and is also subject to the generation skipping transfer tax, but no tax is going to be owed because of the annual exclusion and because of the lifetime exemption amounts. But do keep in mind that after we applied the annual exclusions for the estate and gift tax and the generation skipping transfer tax, we will have reduced both lifetime exemptions by $985,000. Let's take this example just one step farther and assume that the grandparent has used up both of their lifetime exemption amounts and their annual exclusion amounts and still want to make a million dollar gift to a grandchild. Well, in that case, now we've made a taxable gift and we are going to owe taxes. And as I mentioned, the GST tax is an extra layer of tax. So if you find yourself paying gift tax and GST tax, you actually have to pay both taxes. So in this case, we have a grandparent who's made a million dollar gift and because they've used up their exemptions and their annual exclusion, that's all going to be taxed and they're both going to be taxed at the 40% rate meaning that in order to make that million dollar gift the grandparent actually ends up paying out of their own pocket 1.8 million dollars so you want to be very careful when you are making gifts to skip persons you will want to be sure you discuss any such gifts with your estate planning attorney so that they can advise you on the best way to do that so that you do not incur too heavy of a tax bill so just in summary again the, the GST tax is, is very very complicated if you're considering making a gift to someone who might qualify as a skip person you need to discuss it with your estate planning attorney. The GST tax is an additional layer of tax, which means that if you make a taxable gift to a skip person, you're going to pay not only gift tax or possibly estate tax, but also generation skipping transfer tax. Remember that the generation skipping transfer tax only applies to transfers actually made to skip persons, and as we've talked about many times, and that is someone who is more than one generation below your own, example, grandchildren or great-grandchildren, and or someone who is more than 37 and one half years younger than you. But do keep in mind that there is a possible generation adjustment for someone. Again, the example we talked about was where a grandchild is predeceased by their parent, i.e. the grandparent's child. And because of that, the grandchild steps in 
to the generation of the child, meaning for purposes of transfers from the grandparent to the grandchild, that grandchild is no longer a skip person, and therefore those transfers are no longer subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. And again, there are essentially three types of transfers that are subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. That would be the direct skip, which is simply a transfer to a skip person. We also have the taxable distribution, which is a distribution from a trust to a skip person, and then the taxable termination, which is when essentially a trust terminates and makes distributions to skip persons. Those are the transfers that are subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. Well, now that that is all clear as mud, let's go ahead and take a look at today's movie quote of the day, and it is from the movie The Sandlot. Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. Well, thanks very much for stopping by today as we concluded our series on the U.S. transfer tax system. I hope this has given you a good overview of the estate and gift tax and the generation skipping transfer tax. And as always, here is my contact information. If you have any questions or if you have any topics you'd like to see discussed on the estate planning toolbox, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you again for stopping by and check back again soon for our next podcast.